A warm welcome back to Stone Valley for episode 25 with me, Mr. Sealy P. I'm at the North Cell Point. I bought all the barley up. The price is still climbing. It's just gone above 600. It's still in the green, still climbing, so I'm going to leave it. It's time for corn silage. That's what we're going to be doing. Um, I did say in the last episode. Yeah, I'm sure it is. <clears throat> I'm having a few problems with my throat last couple of days um, kind of a little bit squeaky, bit painful, I'm just wondering whether I'm going to get a I don't want to get a throat infection that's the last thing I need but um, I wanted to kind of apologise I guess, let me just sort this out hang on a second right, that's that sorted, you'll see in a second um, you probably will see them from the thumbnail. I've gone for a John Deere forage harvester. They had it available locally. Haven't used any green machines for a while. And we are, you know, we're in Illinois. So that's the forage harvester we're going to use. I was looking at using the new, the Krona that's available with tracks. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to use the 9700. Uh, this is the 390 plus John Deere header. That's a 9 meter. That should be good. And I have bought a miller machine. That's going to be for picking stuff up. Um, I will... Hopefully, when I come to edit this, or if I remember, I don't always, um, to put... Either a picture will come up, or I'll put a little caption up. Because a few people have asked me where to find this, because they've been looking for it and can't find it. And I can't remember what category it's under. So I'll have to have a look off camera, and I'll hopefully I'll put something up. Now, to go alongside this, a little bit like when I did the sugar cane in the last episode... Forage harvesters can be a bit of a pain with hookups. They were right from the start of FS19. There is now available the um, front lifter mod, um, which is basically a, a crated three-point link, or palleted, however you want to look at it, and it will hook onto any trailer hitch. But there are trailers that will work with forage harvesters. Um, my go-to is the random, the sugarcane harvesters. Um, again, it's kind of... Although I've just done sugarcane, and I use different trailers for that... The Randon sugarcane trailer, 66,500 litre capacity, and it does take forage. And it works brilliantly. The great thing that is you can kind of use it almost like an auger, because it tips sideways, you can then use it to tip into um, other trailers. So I'll just make sure I've got the right... There we go, that'll work nicely, won't it? Um, I'm going to lease... Thank you. Just one, because I'm going to use my lorry. So what I will do is tip this into my lorry once it's empty. That's my only concern, is because the price is still climbing. I was hoping the price would be kind of there by now, but it's not. Um, there are a couple of these available. This is the Kemper pack. I think this is the Giants one I went with. Um, there is another one by... Oh, man, who was the modder? Sorry, it's gone. With loads more... Is it I... Is it MTS? Or INF? Oh, I can't remember now. Um, with a whole load of extra bells and whistles and fun stuff. But yeah, this will hook up very nicely. So if you are a one-man operation, it makes life a lot easier. But as with the sugarcane harvester, if you're doing forage harvesting operations, you can let the forage harvester run with a worker and you can run alongside it with a trailer tractor trailer, lorry trailer, however you want to go about it and unload directly into it. It's entirely up to how you go about it. Um, this is the option I decided to go for. We've got field six that we're going to be clearing of our corn. This will be taken to the bunker side up with the BGA um, and it will be compacted, covered. Whether we decide to sell it at the BGA or not, I haven't quite decided yet. I do need to empty my bunker silo at the dairy farm. Um, should put those on, I guess, you know. but yeah, this is what we're going to be using. So we'll get the uh, corn silaging done. I don't know how much we'll get off the field. It's not a massive field, but we'll get some off of it. I haven't done any forage harvest in a while. So why not? I've got the money to do it. Um, I said in the last episode also about increasing the herd. I'm considering... Considering sheep. 
my only problem is the sheet pen on here is linked to field 29 to buy it is like 700 and something thousand I don't really want to lose field 29 off of the um, uh, contract rotor but I'm wondering whether or not I can just do sheep there and still buy them and feed them and everything without owning the land some maps you can some you can't some you have to own the land otherwise it won't work um, some the actual triggers won't even appear it won't show there are animals there until you buy the land and when you buy the land the animal triggers pop up where am I going it's here lose my mind right beacons off pipe out this one comes with a small middle and long pipe um, I went for the long I just thought it made life easier switch the header let's open the header up I haven't begun any seeding or anything yet I thought you know what I'm going to get this done then I'll worry about the seeding afterwards like I said, I'm hoping that the price for barley will stop at some point soon because I really need my lorries I need the trailers but we'll just have to see 610 and still climbing right let's turn this on There we go. I love the chopped texture on this. I think it's brilliant. It looks fantastic. I'm hoping I don't have an issue with this. I shouldn't do. I've used the random trailers before while doing this. Like I say, if you're a one-man operation, 66,000 litres is not to be sniffed at. Um, I, I, you know, that's a fair old size. Whether it will be done like this in the real world again, maybe maybe not depends where you are depends who's running uh, generally speaking from my experience what I've seen personally out in the fields in the UK up in the lakes generally speaking when they're doing any kind of forage harvesting whether it be on a crop whether it be on grass they'll have a vehicle running alongside the harvester rather than the harvester towing a trailer itself but again I haven't seen every forage harvesting operation there may well be loads of farms out there to do but I just thought um, this is how I want to go about it I do like the look of this nice looking bit of kit there are some really nice forage harvesters out as well the Russell Mash um, modded Russell Mash um, is that a giant one as well I really like that because it's really cheap as well I mean the thing about forage harvesters is when you look at them if you haven't done any forage harvesting and you're looking at doing some forage harvesting in game there's all different horsepowers and sizes and that kind of thing. Bottom line of it is, even the smallest forage harvester, depends if you go for a trailed one or self-propelled, um, um, I found the small Russell Mash, which is one of the cheapest ones to buy or use or rent, generally speaking I lease them I don't always buy them because I'm, I don't do that much if this was my sole job all I was going to be doing on whatever map I was on was just making silage then I would buy one hands down but the Russell Mash is one of the cheapest ones to go for and it does exactly the same job a lot of times like, like with most machinery and stuff in game it comes down to um, a manufacturer preference it comes down to a design a style you might look at one and think actually I like the look of that in reality they all do the same job you know generally speaking the difference between doing grass if you just cut grass and put that into a bunker silo again the point about it is you compact it to take all the oxygen out the bacteria works away it kind of pickles it ferments it once it's covered the more oxygen left in it the more chance there is of mold and rot and you know, stuff not working properly um, but, um, but when you're doing chaffing, when you're using a forage harvester, the actual forage harvester's internals has a load of kind of has a load of cross-cut cutters. Okay, what's, what's, what's going on? I 
Hmm. I'll have to come across the field for that, that's a bit weird. Um, could just be there's a bit of a slope there, it doesn't quite like the, the angle maybe. Um, yeah, it's like the kind of cross cut cutters, which cuts out a lot smaller, but as far as I'm aware also, the operator can change the cut size and cut length. Again, this was, I was watching Tom Pemberton's Farm Life and they were having some silaging done and the company that normally does their silaging came back to do their silaging for them again and they said when the stuff was being tipped into the bunker silo they noticed it was a lot longer than it normally is and when they spoke to the operator he said you know it just comes down to we change the cut length and it doesn't always make a huge difference with regard to the silage itself it's normally just as good it ferments just as well um, yeah I don't know it's just you know, settle these things differently but this works really well and we are almost full and I think I might just have to bite the bullet and sell the uh, bar there whatever price we've got at the moment I could bring it all the way back put it back into storage again and find the price only goes up a little bit in which case it's been kind of a waste of time so what we will do is stop there now the problem is anytime you're leasing a piece of machinery or if you've got workers hired or anything like that you want that piece of machinery moving constantly so generally speaking what I will do if I'm doing forage harvest you know, I have two trailers I'll hire a worker the worker will run when it fills up I will bring over whatever vehicle I'm bringing I will detach the full one hook up an empty one send the worker off again and I'll take the full one and unload it that's generally what I do but I've only gone with one random and once I've got the lorry over here what I will be able to do is then just tip into it. I think that should work okay. Um, like I say, there are all different ways of doing it. Like with most jobs in game, you know, there are multiple different ways and you may well do it a completely different way. Um, I'm not too bothered at the moment about how efficient I'm being. I just, I'll get the job done and when it's done, I'll move on to prepping the field and I'm going to get a load of seeding done because all my fields need doing. That's where I'm at. It's Sunday the 23rd, it's my eldest daughter's 24th birthday today. I'm going to try and get a video out today, so I'm going to want to get it done as quickly as I can. And then, um, yeah, enjoy the day. I'm just going to get it tips. It's sitting at 6.15 at the moment, which to be honest with you, for barley it's a pretty good price. I can't see it going up much higher than that, and even if it does, it doesn't matter. We'll do all right. Should be over 40 grand. We've got 80,000 litres of the stuff. Which again, in my head I'm thinking, it was a small field. On the scale of the map, yeah, it's a small field. I know it's only a two times map. I'm on console and four times maps are bigger and they do 16 times maps. Field sizes on those types of things are huge. And also, you know, across America, I get it, fields, you know, there are fields and farms which are absolutely massive. So on the scale of it, you know, American farm-wise, American map-wise, this map doesn't necessarily have the biggest fields out there, but they're big to me. Being a British-type fellow... They are rather large. Right, let's get this back, get it alongside. I am waiting for field... Well, half of field 7 that I grassed to be fully grown before I do my next cut again, because I've got the cut on field 8 already. Um, it's regrown, so that'll have a double cut, and the other bit will only have a single, but it'll be plenty. And that's going to be the hay. Um, so I've got hay to do, straw to sort out, and I'm sorting out some silage now. Again, I have got silage already... No, I've got TMR already made and stored, um, which is fine. And I've got resources already to make more. Again, fantastic, is where I want to be. But if I'm going to increase these herds to a, a fair size... I need as much product as I can get my hands on. So that's what I'm going to be doing. 
I might will do. Swing round. I was going to swing round on that field. To be fair, that field doesn't get used, but I'll swing round on my own field. No, I shouldn't be driving on the field, but the ground's fine. Please don't flip round. Sometimes this doesn't like it. Right. Let's see if I can get right alongside. Hopefully this will work because the. Uh, Okay. Um, the Randon's a bit higher than the BSM, so jump into here. What I should be able to do now is switch to. Nope, am I still in there? I think I am. That's better. I'm the wrong side, aren't I? Of course I am. Oh, man alive. Ugh. Why did I not notice that? It's not going to go well. Please reverse back straight. As straight as you can. Come on. Don't go all squirrel on me now. Oh. That's gone a lot better than I thought it was going to. I really thought I was going to lose that random trailer. Onto the crop, onto the crop. Like I say, would I be doing this normally? No, of course not. I want that harvester stone on the field. Now, am I close enough to tip? That's the question. Don't know if I am, am I? Could end up with this all over the floor. Yeah. It's a good idea in theory. And what I would normally do is take the actual rand and, and tip it, but I don't think I'm, I still don't know if I'm close enough, you know. Oh, all I can do is try, let's try. If it goes on the floor, I'll come and scoop it up. Please tip. Ah. Uh, that's. Weird. Why am I not tipping? The BSM trailers take... They take chaff. Why would that not be working? There's chaff that's in it. Okay, I'm baffled now. What is happening? Is it because I'm just not close? I mean, how close do I need to be? I'm going to have to rub the paintwork otherwise. Which is now what I'm doing. Nope. I don't know what's going on then. Um, not what I was hoping for. Oh, no, I just wasn't close enough. Man, that's going to be awkward. Okay, well... Hmm. It's a tricky one. In all honesty, I mean, I suppose thinking about it through FS17, FS19, I've used all sorts of different trailers. I just find, found, because the random hooks up automatically, it's an easier option. But I guess, I mean, I could, with the dolly, just hook directly to... Actually, that's a point. Let's try that as well. That should work, shouldn't it? Let's grab that. Let's switch that. Now I know I probably shouldn't be putting the, the trailer on the field. But again, you know what? Let's just check it out and see if it works. Because I don't see any reason why the dolly, the flegal dolly, shouldn't hook up to the back of the forage harvester. They don't always, again, I say, sometimes they can be a bit finicky and they don't always work, but... I 
found the flea gall. There you go, hooks up to almost anything. Aha, right. Now we're cooking on gas. So what I can do now is what I initially said I, would, I could do. And while if I set a worker off with this, I can then deliver with my, my lorry and trailer and then come back and just switch over trailers. Um, which is going to speed up this process no end. Let's turn that on. Just want to get a couple of headlands in and then I can get the worker going. And now this field doesn't seem that big, but I've already got from doing a couple of strips, literally a couple of strips, 66,000 litres there. So we are going to get a fair bit of this field, aren't we? Blimey, okay. It's one of those jobs as well, I think you forget, every time you do it, you forget just how much you get. Another beautiful big open America, mate, you've got plenty of room, plenty of room to manoeuvre your machinery around without worrying about hedges and fences and stuff. Right, let's just crack a work on that. I don't know what's going to happen when it gets to the end though, that's if it makes it to the end before it's full. Right, I'm going to jump out. So while that's running, oh, I'm getting lost. Now I'm pretty sure, again, I don't do it very often, but I'm pretty sure when you get to the final growth stage, um, before it gets to ready to harvest, when it's in its green state, I'm pretty sure you can silage harvest in that state. Um, because obviously now when it's all kind of dried out is when you'd be harvesting for corn normally. And obviously to make silage, you want it to be more green. So, you know, when the plant's reached its point where it's no longer um, growing or producing and it just gets to that point it's ready to harvest, generally speaking, silaging is a greener crop. That's why you use grass and other, you know, other things. You can chaff all sorts of stuff with the various different headers available. You can chaff entire crops if you want to. That's looking good. I'm happy with that. I didn't plough out the strip between field 8 and field 7. Um... That could cause me an issue when I come to hiring workers, if I want to hire workers to do the mowing. I could plough it out. I might plough it out and reseed. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But Again, on the grand scheme of things, it's not the end of the world. If I set a worker and it does one of the fields, then I set it to do the second field. At the end of the day, both fields will get done. It's, you know. now, this is one of those jobs. There's me saying, I'll, I'll get this done quickly. This is going to take a while, because there's a lot more than I thought. And what we are going to do is pop it in the bunker silo here. So whether I sell it here or not, or whether I just ferment it here and then come and collect it at some point, I haven't really decided, but... We should get a fair bit, how much I do know. Uh, let's go right to the back corner. If I'm doing a silage harvest and I've done them before, I think Law Folds was possibly on FS17, it was one of the biggest ones I ever did, I think. Um, I think I almost filled the silo. I don't often fill a bunker silo, you know. Um, and that was backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and that was a monster job if I think I'm going to be filling the silo completely I won't spread it out like this I will go to the back fill it right to the top and then gradually work my way forward and then you get a much more kind of packed silo 
if I know I'm not going to be filling a silo, if I'm only going to do, you know, whatever I've got on my field, then generally speaking, I will do it more flat and level, just to make it easier for when you come to compact. But if I've got a funny feeling I'm going to fill the silo completely, I will absolutely, I'll fill it from the back and gradually work my way forward. Um, I'm not going to get that much off of this one. I'm thinking, though, I mean, if, if it's going to be done, this is going to be a map to do it on. What I might do before I finish the series is do a massive, like on all of my fields, do corn and do just a huge silage harvest and see if I can fill a bunker silo. I haven't done that in absolutely ages, but that might be quite cool. How's he looking? Did it say it was full? Unless it's just having a bit of a meltdown on the turn. I wasn't really paying attention. Oh, that's not good. Oh, no. A hide of work, and the problem is now if I go on to that, it's going to ruin the crop. Uh, how is that saying 67,000 litres when the trailer only holds 66, unless there's some in the harvester still? Oh! Mm. Darn you, worker. Right, no one needs to see this. You don't want to see this. I'm just going to... I will move on from this. I'm going to do something I don't normally do. But I'm going to do it off camera. It wasn't full. What was I talking about? Um, it's the round under the 66. It's just 70,000. Um, I'll be honest, what I did... And I don't like doing it. I turned off crop destruction move the harvester and then turn it back on again I, it's not something I normally do I just did sorry, sorry if you're disappointed in me right, so what I'll do now is disconnect that bring that forward grab that do a kind of cross pattern so what I'll do is disconnect that swap them over and away we go again like so And off we go. So with the worker hired, I can then go and get the truck. Off I go again and just go back to the board. Now I know when I've been doing this series, I, I'm preaching to converted most of the time. I know a lot of people that play the game regularly and have, have done silage in, silage harvesting, and you know they've got their own system, their own setup, their own trailers, or they run alongside, however they do it. And this is more, I know I'm talking sometimes to newer people, people that have been playing the game may not have touched forage harvesters, may not have known what they do, may not have done silage harvesting, again may not know what it's about. So you know I try and cover all the bases using a different piece of machinery, you know, for the for the green machine guys. So if you've been watching for a while, I don't I don't think I can't think the last time I used the green forage harvester, I can't think. Um, so yeah, just a, a little bit of summit for everyone. That's kind of what I try to do. A little bit of a kick there. Just trying to give myself a bit more of a, a head than this end. I think one of the reasons why it got caught up is it wasn't full. It just caught up a little, a little bit on the turn. So I'm hoping that by giving myself more room, it's got it's all sw swing around in a smoother arc rather than trying to come around too tight on itself. The 
pretty sure when I did it on law folds, I was using the um, cramp trailers, 59,000 litres. Mm, pretty sure it was. It took a long time. This is filling up so quickly. <laughs> so the job is I'm watching it, I want to get the headlands in. But the problem is, because it's filling up so quickly, I know then that when I set the work off again, I've got a very limited window to get this delivered, put into the bunk silo and brought back again. Yeah, right, so, before that goes over the crop. What I'm doing is get this done, so. Nice.
I'm on the last strip. We're not going to quite get... I don't think we're going to get a full load. Oh, that would annoy me if we go just over. No, we shouldn't do. We're going to be almost spot on, aren't we? Yep, that's fantastic. Right, so... That's it. That's the corn harvest done, the silage in part. This 68,555 is you know, the biogas plant. We now need to um, compact the silo. This field needs spraying. It also needs ploughing because we've just done corn on it. So I've got the puma over in the corner. You can just see behind us with the plough. I need to plough the gap out or the strip between fields um, six and seven. What I will do though is fold that up. Disconnect. Uh, what do I want to do? No, disconnect that. Pipe in. This worked brilliantly. Uh, it's really, really nice. Like I said before, I do like the look of it. There, I think I went with the smallest horsepower as well on that one. You can go up to a 9.9, I think. The 9,900, which has much higher horsepower. But like I said, I don't... There aren't many occasions when you're going to need that kind of horsepower. I'm not sure when you would. I'm going to take the dolly with me. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to drop the dolly off. Because otherwise reversing onto the um, biogas plant trying to unload with the dolly on is going to be ridiculous so what I'll do drop the dolly here to attach onto that uh, let's do no that I'll put it to one side that way uh, I can attach it up however I want to rather than hook it up to the wrong trailer I prefer to have the one that says long vehicle um, on the very back because it is a long vehicle and I can't remember which one of the trailers at the moment has got that on the other one I could have hooked it up it's all right Oh, tell if I actually hooked up. There we go. Cover on. Let's get this delivered. Um, I decided to take over the big bud to the compacting. When I had the Steiger, I think a lot of people said the flotation tyres on it were reducing compaction, which is what it's supposed to on the field, which wasn't helping compact the bunker silo. The big bud's a big old heavy thing, and I did the first little bit of compacting off screen, and it worked brilliantly. Um, a lot cheaper than getting the D11 bulldozer which apparently compacts the silo in ridiculously quick time um, we'll blanket it that can go with fermenting we'll come back over I'll finish fertilizing and then we'll plow out field six um, don't need to move on to seeds and stuff like that but again the seeding I might well do off screen I honestly can't remember the last time I checked I was on about 300 and 398,000 litres or something. I'm not sure what I've got in there at the moment with this load. We'll find out. And it was fairly quick. I think I was at 1.4 hours on the uh, forage harvester. So, yeah, 1.4 hours. Oh, that's what I'm going to do as well. I need to bring over the wheel loader with the bucket because I think some of the um, chaff has squeezed out the front. And if I don't get the back in when I blanket it, it'll be left sort of just sitting out there. Which isn't, again, it's not the end of the world. You can clean it up and just get rid of it or whatever you want to do. So, uh, yeah, we're just about to see then how much I've got ended up with in here. It could end up being a nice payday here at the biogas plant if I want to sell it at the biogas plant. Or I just use it for making total mixed ration. But I'm thinking I can use my grass field. It'd be quicker and easier to get stuff over to the the bunker silo at the dairy so what I'm intending to do is empty the bunker silo at the dairy at some point do another grass harvest or mow and collect the grass and put that into the other bunker silo as chaff for making top mix rations so I'm, I'm erring on the side of that this is going to be sold here at the biogas plant that's my plan anyway um, again I don't know we'll see how it goes might be a conveyor belt job it might be lorries I haven't really decided how I'm going to go about it but uh, we should have a fair bit in here. I'm, I reckon, oh, I don't know actually, 600,000 again? I think that's what we had in the other one, didn't we? 600 and something. Can't be far off that. Then we'll get the, uh, the bud onto it. Last little bit, and then we're good.
Right, let's get out of the way. Then what I'll do is turn on the window so we get an idea of what we've got in it. Let's click that on. Bud. Let's compact it. Oh, 693, so not far off 700,000. Compacted 96%. Wow, okay, that's good. It's not going to take much to do this, then, is it? I say, it'll hit not 100%, look, it's almost immediately. But then my mind's like, mm, but I do, I want to flatten it out. I don't want to leave it looking like this. <laughs> oh, dearie me, that's just me. But in all honesty with this, it won't take very long to do that anyway. And then what I'll do is bring the wheel loader over. We'll make sure we've got any errant stuff that's out the front pushed in. Then I'll cover it. So as you can see, it's, it's smoothing out as well as um, compacting. Although we are at 100% compacted, so there's nothing to stop me blanketing the silo now anyway. You see how quickly it's getting rid of the ridges. And smoothing everything out. Now I could have put triples on this to do this as well, but if I put triples on it I wouldn't have got in through the gate to the biogas plant. Not bad at all. Swing that around a little bit. So I go across the end. Don't want to get this stuck though. Right, I'm going to go and get the wheel loader, clear up this front bit. Okay, got the 821G. Let's just scrape up the stuff in the front. Going a little bit. Um, like I say, it's a tricky one because then coming back out again you you risk tipping it. Oh I've just made a mess of that now. Oh, it's not right time levelling it. Oh, never mind. That's what the uh, that's what the buds for. I know a while back people were messaging me saying that they found that when they're compacting silos they lose the load in compaction. The silo says one thing and then when they compact it they end up with the load missing. This could be why. If it squeezes it out the front that can be why whatever you initially put in there as you start to compact if it squeezes it out. Now sometimes you'll get bleeding through the walls as well. That's never great if you get a bit of bleeding through the wall. You can lose some that way. Um, it depends if you're using a modded silo or one on the map or you know. There's a whole host of reasons why it can happen. Um, Generally speaking, it's because it's disappeared at the front, and that's why I always do this. It doesn't seem like a lot, and sometimes I think, is it really worth bothering with? But I just prefer it. You make sure you don't have any left when you put the blanket on. You don't have any green sticking out the front. Like that. Hopefully, that'll be all I need to do. I'll then just use the big buds to the final bit of compact. Although it's still saying 100% compacted, which is pretty impressive. Now, if that's just the weight of the bud. There we go. So we've ended up with in the pit 695,174 and it's still saying 100% compacted. So all I've got to do now is get the bud off, 
cover it and we are job done on our corn silage. As I say then we just need to do a bit of prep on field uh, field six. Let's turn that off. Oh, actually no, I want that on. A lot of people say they blanket it with the vehicle on. If it says blanket, blanket it, then drive off. Um, I can't remember what map it was. It might have been in 17 though. I did that on one of the maps and the, the tractor fell through. I had an absolute nightmare with it. So I've just got into a habit of making sure whatever vehicle I'm using comes off the front and then I blanket it. Just again, that's just me personally. Just There we go. That's now fermenting. I can leave that to get on with it. Uh, let's get this machinery back and then I'll get cracking on the ploughing. That can turn off again. And there we go. Happy days, that wasn't too bad. I think the last time I used the randoms for doing this. I think I was tipping into smaller trailers. I have in the past used the Flegel Bull trailers because they daisy chain. They're another great set. I remember doing it on FS15. I'm sure I've mentioned this before. I had a Crone... Oh, what was it? I can't remember now. I had a forage harvester and I'm sure I had five... It was five or six Flegel Bulls all hooked together. And all I would do was swap one out, swap one out, swap one out, and in the end I'd have the full chain. Now I know, like I say, in, the, in real life, it, it's no way it would pull them. Actually, I can go this way, kind of, my field's all clear. Um, but it, it works fine. So if you're not going down a, a, a realistic or semi-realistic approach and you just want to get the harvest done, whatever method works, works. You know, if, it's, if you're happy with it and it's a quick and efficient way of doing it, go for it. Right, yo then. Let's get this done. Uh, I want to do L1 and triangle to allow crate fields. Drop that down and take that out. There we go. So I've now got field six and half of seven. And the other half of seven and eight are grass. I'm just trying to decide what to do next for putting what I'm going to put in all of these. I've done a bit of everything, haven't I, really? If I want to go money, I think I might go soybean or sunflower. They seem to be doing all right at the moment. Lift that up, turn off, allow crate fields. So now if I put a work on this, it should just crack on. Fantastic. What we'll also do is check on the map. Where are we? Oh, it needs liming as well. Seriously. <laughs> oh. Okay, that's going to require a bit of work then. Well, until the plough's got going, there's not really a lot of point. I suppose what I could do is, well, it's a big machine to run a fairly small plough. I might go and grab the Challenger and get the other plough running there. I could get it done twice as quick, and twice as fast, quicker. Okay, I've got birthday stuff to sort out and do, so I'm going to leave you there. We've got the corn silage done, uh, that's all sorted. Next episode, I'm going to be getting a new, another new machine. Probably get some seeding done in the background if I decide what crop I'm going to put in the ground. Um, what else was I going to do? I've got a whole host of stuff. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you have, give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, 
then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.